Did your iPhone suddenly crash on December 2nd? Is it rebooting for no reason? Well, no need to worry. It's not just you and there's an easy fix. If you didn't already know about it, upgrading should solve the problem. I'm Mike from Go Cell Phone Repair and if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon for more tech news and tutorials. If you update your iPhone, you should be able to eliminate the December 2nd problem. And if for some reason you're unable to do so right away or you don't want to upgrade, at least for now, you can manually set the clock on your iPhone back to November 28th and that'll basically buy you a few days and the rebooting problem should be solved temporarily. I mean, you'll be off by a couple days on your calendar, but at least your phone won't just randomly reboot. No idea why the previous iOS didn't like September 2nd specifically. Apple has been having its share of software problems lately, including the undoing of a patch that was supposed to fix the root bug. If you didn't hear about that one already, according to Wired.com, macOS High Sierra had a hole in the system security that allowed any malicious person or program trying to log into your computer to simply enter root as the username and leave the password field blank. They could then bypass the prompt and get full access to your computer. Those who hadn't upgraded to High Sierra 10.13.1 before installing the patch released by Apple found that installing the patch and then upgrading their Mac OS would cause the bug to reappear. Apple's support page says, if you recently updated from macOS High Sierra 10.13 to 10.13.1, reboot your Mac to make sure the security update is applied properly, or if you see MRT config data 1.27 in the installations list under software in system report, your Mac is also protected. I know that's a lot to remember, at least for me, so I'll include a link in the video description so you can read the details for yourself. Cell phone addiction? could affect your brain. Well, I could have told you that. According to a report, no, actually, according to a study published by Science Daily, smartphone and internet addicted teenagers have higher rates of depression, anxiety, insomnia, and impulsiveness. Apparently, addicted teens have an imbalance in their brain chemistry, resulting in increased levels of gamma aminobutyric acid, a neurotransmitter that slows down brain signals. So yes, too much phone and internet can make you slow. BART cell phone theft is up this year. In 2015, there were 180 cell phone thefts on the Bay Area's rapid transit train system, 274 in 2016, and 225 just during the first half of 2017. Many of these thefts are committed by young people, including a group of between 40 to 60 kids who got onto a BART train back in April at the Oakland Coliseum station where they robbed several people of their cell phones and bags, leaving at least two people injured. BART launched an awareness campaign that educates riders about the possibility of phone theft and encourages them to keep their belongings secure, especially near the doors of the train where thieves are more likely to grab and run. Google has been accused of stealing millions of iPhone users' data illegally. News.com.au says that a consumer activist has launched a class action suit that could lead to the payout of hundreds of millions for the 5 million iPhone users whose data was collected without their knowledge. Google supposedly bypassed the security of Apple's Safari app and planted cookies into phones before later selling collected data to an advertising network. Bad Google. But it's surprising to hear that there are actually 5 million people who use Safari. It doesn't seem to be all that popular, at least in the US. Google denies that it acted illegally and says that it has defended similar cases in the past, I assume successfully. The British group dubbed Google You Owe Us says that the unlawful cookies were planted between 2011 and 2012. If the lawsuit is successful, British iPhone users could be awarded up to 300 pounds compensation per person. So if you're in the UK and you had an iPhone during that time period, it's probably worth looking into at the least. Apple is sharing your face ID, I've been told. I feel like we're developing some trends here. Of course, Apple takes its user security seriously as stated by spokesperson Tom Newmare. This commitment is reflected in the strong protections we have built around face ID data. 
protecting it with the secure enclave in iPhone 10, as well as many other technical safeguards we have built into iOS. However, it's not just Apple we need to be thinking about here. All of the apps on your iPhone 10 that use facial recognition should be considered a potential risk. Do you really trust all of the app developers to safeguard your biometric data? That's the real question. Jay Stanley, a senior policy analyst at the American Civil Liberties Union said, the chances we are going to see mischief around facial data is pretty high. If not today, then soon. If not on Apple, then on Android. The 52 unique micro movements in your eyelids, mouth, and other features that are collected by the iPhone's True Depth camera are available to any developer who agrees to the terms and conditions listed in contracts required by the App Store. The rules include asking users permission before accessing the camera, which we all agree to as soon as we click proceed or yes or okay, agreeing not to sell your data, or using it for advertising, which is great, assuming that they follow the rules. It's also worth questioning how thorough Apple will be able to be in policing the compliance to its terms, not just by major app publishers, but by the huge number of smaller developers who may access your Face ID data. Activists occupy stores in France to say, pay your taxes. Well, according to the article on marketwatch.com, they are shouting, not just saying it, Global activists stormed and occupied Apple stores. Really? Stormed? They must mean this. To utter or say with angry vehemence, as in the strikers stormed their demands. Had to scroll down in a ways to find that one, but I guess it's appropriate here. Attack or the Association for the Taxation of Financial Transactions and Citizens Action Organization, which is obvious why they went with attack, uh, says we will stop when Apple pays. What are they talking about? Well, according to their claims, Apple has used tax optimization methods that allowed it to accumulate over $230 billion in tax havens. They say that Apple is using its Irish subsidiaries to relocate profits, allowing them to avoid paying taxes. There are two rates of corporation tax in the Republic of Ireland, 12.5% for trading income, 25% for non-trading income. The company tax rate for France is 33.33%. So if I'm understanding this correctly, Apple made a bunch of money in France and then sort of moved those profits so that it looked like they were earned in Ireland where they could save some money and the French government doesn't get their fair share. At least that's the way I'm seeing this. And I'm sure that Uncle Sam would feel the same way if something similar happened here. The occupation ended after three hours, but not without participants leaving messages of protests on the screens of devices inside the Apple stores. Take that, Apple. ZTE's new Axon M has an unusual appearance considering the slimmer profile that most smartphones sport these days, but there's a good reason. It unfolds. The Axon M has two screens that are joined together with the hinge and can be activated by pressing a button on the display. And when someone told me that there was a foldable phone, this wasn't exactly what I pictured. It does offer some advantages as far as multitasking goes, if you can get past the bulky and heavy design. But the biggest problem seems to be that the Qualcomm Snapdragon 821 processor uh, appears to be underpowered for running two displays at the same time. If that and the $725 price tag doesn't discourage you, then hopefully you're an AT&T subscriber since this model is exclusive to them at the moment. Samsung's recent Galaxy S8 software seems to have disabled fast charging for some users, and this I can imagine will be very annoying, especially as fast as those batteries drain. This may not affect everyone, but some S8 and S8 Plus owners are reporting that since their last software update, fast charging is no longer an option. No word on what happened or any response from Samsung as of yet, but I guess welcome to the broken software club, Samsung. Some users are also saying that once their battery dies completely, it won't charge at all. So for the moment, their phones are unusable. And even when the fix is released, how are they going to get the device powered up so that they can perform the update? If your Galaxy S8 is charging properly now, it's probably best to wait for Samsung to release a statement to clarify the best course of action. I'm Mike from Go Cell Phone Repair, and that's been 10 minutes of tech. I'll be back on Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for the weekly live stream, and again on Thursday at 6 p.m. 
for another one right here on YouTube. Until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.